This is USVI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for USVI News. I'm Emily Matson. Aaliyah Boston continues to make headlines this year nationwide and, of course, in the USVI. Recently, the territory celebrated Aaliyah Boston Day, and now this celebration will have a permanent place in the territory. Three, two, one. Get out, Aaliyah's big sign reveal is one of the first things visitors and VI residents will see when they arrive at the Cyril E. King Airport in St. Thomas. The sign is made possible by several agencies, including the Department of Sports, Parks and Recreation and Government House. The celebration was enormous for Aaliyah Boston on Saturday. In our USVI News, Ali Bourne-Vinek was there for all the action. As you can see behind me, this Aaliyah Boston parade is in full effect, full force. We have come out to support our national champion and daughter of the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is an enormous and spectacular day, one that is undoubtedly historic. Well, Governor, Senators, and all government officials who are present, thank you for all your support that I've received, as well as the support you continue to provide to a leagues and programs that have allowed me to play when I was younger that helped start my career. That, that was really the beginning stages, so I really just want to say thank you, and I appreciate it. I want to thank the Boston family, uh, first of all, for giving us the recipe for what it takes to make good children, right? Because all it takes is a whole lot of love and support by your family, the entire family, friends, mother, father, auntie, whoever. It takes a high, high, high level of dependence and respect for education. What can I say that anyone in the world who has watched you play has not already said? Okay. I know you've heard it all. You are extraordinary. Your achievements, both on and off the court, make us proud to call you our own and proud to call you a U.S. Virgin Islander. To all the children, Please continue to work at what you want and surround yourself with people that are good company to push you to be great. Remember, you're known by the company you keep. And remember, equally important, iron sharpens iron. Choose your friends wisely and surround yourself with people that want to see you be great. Wow, what a celebration. Well deserved for her, all of her success that she has achieved so far and yet to come as well. Agents with the VI Department of Justice arrest a local woman for allegedly exploiting an elderly woman whom she was caring for. 26-year-old Kaiza Hodge is facing federal charges, including embezzlement, forgery, and grand larceny. According to VI Attorney General Denise George, Hodge was hired as a caretaker for a 76-year-old woman who had suffered a hip injury. Her 84-year-old husband called authorities to report Hodge had stolen 31 of his checks and wrote them out to herself, totaling, get this, $30,100, which he did not authorize or issue. The alleged crime was reported back in January, investigators making the arrest this week. What's more, Hodge, according to A.G. George, is currently in jail serving a two-year sentence for a prior forgery case. While COVID-19 cases remain high territory-wide, they have gone down on all islands. Health officials are currently tracking a total of 507 active COVID cases territory-wide, with the most significant amount on St. Croix, with 381 active cases, 109 on St. Thomas, and 17 on St. John right now. The CDC has just added four destinations to its high-risk list, list rather, including a Caribbean charmer. St. Kitts and Nevis, part of the Leeward Islands east of Puerto Rico, was placed on the Level 3 category on Monday. In April, the CDC overhauled its rating system for assessing COVID-19 risk for travelers. The Level 3 high-risk category is now the top rung in terms of risk level. Level 2 is considered moderate. Level 1 is considered low risk. Level 4, previously the highest risk category, is now reserved only for special circumstances such as extremely high case counts, emergence of a new variant of concern, or healthcare infrastructure collapse. Under the new system, no destinations have been placed at level four so far.
President Biden signed several bipartisan bills into law this week, which improve health care for U.S. military veterans. As Natalie Brand explains, one of the new laws expands access to breast cancer screenings and is named after a veteran who recently passed away. Morning. CBS News spoke with Marine veteran Dr. Kate Hendricks Thomas less than six months before she lost her battle with stage four breast cancer, leaving behind her young son Matthew and her husband Shane. The radiologist said it looked like I'd been dipped in something. Hendricks Thomas learned of her diagnosis at age 38, more than a decade after returning home from Iraq where she was exposed to toxic burn pits on base. Fellow Marine veteran Mindy Beyer has been closely tracking legislation named in her friend's honor, requiring the Department of Veterans Affairs to provide mammograms for those who served near burn pits or had other toxic exposures, regardless of symptoms, age, or family history. We hope that the message is getting out to veterans. If you have been serving, even if you weren't around burn pits, there's a possibility you were around some sort of toxic exposure. Please go earlier. Please check yourself out. The legislation is one of nine bills for veterans the president signed into law Tuesday. Because veterans are the backbone, the spine of who we are as a country. We owe them. We owe them big. This signing ceremony comes with pressure on Capitol Hill to still pass legislation to help an estimated 3.5 million veterans exposed to toxins in more recent conflicts. It took Hendricks Thomas three years to get her claim approved after it was initially denied. Kate was very proud to serve her country, and I think that her message was all, would always be um, fight for your country, but then fight for each other when you get back. It's a message advocates hope senators hear when they take a final vote on burn pit legislation expected later this week. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. So if the bill named Honoring Our Pact passes in the Senate, it, it is expected to get a final vote in the House. This week, both the House and Senate are pushing forward separately on gun control legislation. Our USVI News' Haley Potter brings us details on both plans, which are now in the works. Congressional Democrats gathered with gun violence victims, including former colleague Gabby Giffords on the National Mall, where more than 45,000 flowers represent lives lost in the past year. We must never stop fighting. Fight, fight, fight. What I loved most about her was the way she loved her family unconditionally. At the same time, former Buffalo Fire Commissioner Garnell Whitfield Jr. gave emotional testimony about his mother at a Senate hearing on domestic terrorism. Ruth Whitfield was one of the 10 victims gunned down in the racist massacre at Top Supermarket. I ask every one of you to imagine the faces of your mothers as you look at mine and ask yourself, is there nothing that we can do? That's a question that federal lawmakers are trying to answer when it comes to gun control. This week, the House is moving forward on a wide-ranging package, but it's not likely to pass the evenly divided Senate. Separately, a bipartisan group of senators is trying to find a narrow compromise that could include enhanced background checks, incentives for states to pass red flag laws, and investments in schools and mental health. Step one is to try to get a deal. As I've said repeatedly, I hope that'll be sooner rather than later. Lead negotiator Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy went to the White House to update President Biden. My goal is to try to get an agreement this week. I, I believe Actor wrong. Matthew McConaughey also came to the White House a day after discussing gun reform with lawmakers. We are in a window of opportunity right now that we have not been in before. A window where it seems like real change. Real change can happen. He grew up in Uvalde, Texas, where the Robb Elementary School mass shooting took the lives of 19 children and two others. And that was our Haley Potter reporting. On average, around 38 children die every year after being left in a hot car, according to Kids and Car Safety Organization. Now, while that's not a lot, one is too many because it's a tragedy that does not have to happen. So here's more in a push to make parents more aware of the dangers. It can happen in a matter of minutes. As the sun beats down on a car, a danger rises up. Children, in fact, they get overheated three to five times faster than adults. This can prove to be very, very deadly. 
Leaving a child in the car, even for a quick errand, can be dangerous. Children's Health Care of Atlanta's Strong for Life program says when it's 75 degrees, it takes 30 minutes for the inside of your car to hit 104 degrees. But the danger rises with the temperature. At 95 degrees outside, it takes five minutes for the inside to reach 102. Children, they don't do a good job of sweating. They also dehydrate very, very quickly and they don't evaporate the heat from their skin as efficiently as adults, which makes being in a hot environment, including being in a hot car, a particularly dangerous situation for small children and infants. Pediatric emergency physician Dr. Manisha Argawal says many times exhausted parents accidentally forget their child is in the car. Experts suggest buckling a stuffed animal in the front seat or putting something you need in the back seat with your child. Some people say put one of your shoes back there. Some people say put your phone, put your purse, put your wallet. Hopefully it will trigger you to look back and notice, oh, my child is back there too. I need to do something. So the doctor says parents should call 911 immediately if there are signs of heat stroke in their child. And that can include confusion, nausea, loss of consciousness, lack of sweat, and fast breathing and heartbeat as well. Colombia's Navy has released images of artifacts found scattered near a Spanish galleon laden with gold that sank to the bottom of the Caribbean off the coast of Colombia more than 300 years ago. Check this out. Videos show details of items, including what appears to be coins, a cannon, bottles, and cups on the bottom of the sea near the galleon San Jose. The exact location of the wreck of the San Jose, often called the Holy Grail of shipwrecks, was long considered one of history's enduring maritime mysteries. The 62-gun, three-masted Galilean went down on June 8, 1708, with 600 people on board, as well as a treasure of gold, silver, and emeralds during a battle with British ships in the War of the Spanish Succession. The treasure is worth as much as $17 billion by modern standards, the Colombian president also announced discoveries of two additional ships. He also said there are around a dozen other similar ships that will be located by Colombia's Navy. The treasure has been the subject of legal battles between several nations as well as private companies. A true treasure hunt mystery solved indeed. Pretty impressive.